Well, it certainly wasn't that. It certainly wasn't that because, you know, you got to remember that I put out, I put out an album during Wings anyway. <laughs> My first album came out, and it was a separate thing. You know, Paul and I never had a problem with that. You know, he, whatever he wanted to do, I mean, we'd, we'd take time off and do our own thing, a bit of re writing and recording for, for if any time we might want to put out a solo album, big deal. <clears throat> that doesn't mean to say you can't still do Wings. So that's that's put that to bed. But you know, I went along to do to to Montserrat to do this new concept, which was to work with Ringo, Stanley Clark, you know, Steve Gadd. Carl Perkins, uh, Stevie Wonder, and, and just do something that was like now another direction. Using people we admired, <clears throat> you know, players, writers. Obviously Ringo was going to come along and do something because of, you know, the, the, Paul's connection and my connection with him. And we knew we, he'd be great for this song. Or, and Stevie came in and, you know, one day I was working out with his new echo machine and he came in and started playing the keyboards to it and you know something comes of that it was a great combination of people that get together um and we'd met him before with the lindrum idea with the, where we gave him the lindrum so it was basically people who we we like to thought we might like to work with and after i left wings of course paul went on and did it with every ivory and or michael jackson and you know, Elvis Costello, he went, carried that thing on. But the last thing, and, and this is what I was saying about finding out from people on Facebook and, find, and YouTube, is that I found out that recently that I played on certain tracks on Tug of War and Pipes of Peace, which I'd completely forgotten. And also, I don't go out and buy those albums. So I don't, you know, I'm not checking on them every day to see what, what, whether I'm on them or not. It takes other people to say, well, you played on that. Oh, I see, yeah, I remember that now simple and and uh, we were at that stage in where we were doing another album in a sense and basically I left and so it stopped being a Wings album or it, but it, it would have been Wings plus you know all these other names it was Wings branching out into another thing but um, it became his album because I left and there was no Wings anymore in a sense you know Without getting into de too deeply, I did have an album that I I wanted to put out. He gets busted in Japan. We're suddenly not going to be going on, on tour again. And I had this thing of, uh, I want to go out and tour. I, I want to go out and work, you know, and work this album I've got. That's the first thing. And everything else doesn't equate to that, you see. And I really was in that stage where I thought, oh, no. And I wasn't really upset with him for that thing in Japan, by the way, because I still don't know the story behind it. It just threw a spanner in the works, you know, as to what I was wanting to do, which was to play live more. Um, because I enjoy that. You know, I was kind of not tired of the studio, but it, it had run its course, you know, for a little while. So I kind of drifted off. I went to the south of France. And I had an album to promote. And next time I saw Paul, he was doing a, he was doing the uh, the video for Ebony, Ebony and Ivory. And then it kind of drifted away, you know. We kind of drifted away. I would, I never fell out with him, you know. But whatever people think, they don't know what what went down. So and a lot of controversy and all that stuff, and and da 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 da. The press, you know, people you know, people you work for, people work for you that kind of thing the word goes around oh he fell out about this he fell out about that you know i don't i don't look at it that way you see i i would never talk about things negative things because it was such a positive experience the whole thing um you know and i certainly wouldn't want to sort of make it bad by talking about anything that you know silly little things you know i mean i'm just saying the main thing that i moved on was just I wanted to progress in my way, you know. I was ready to go out and do my own thing. And um, we never fell out, nothing like that. But it looked, certainly looked like we did, you know. That was the thing. It certainly looked like we did. Um, and I, to this day, you know, I still defend that because people say, oh, you never talked for years. Well, so what? You know, <laughs> it's like you go off and do your own thing. I hadn't spoken to the Moody Blues for 30 years either. Big deal. I didn't fall out with them either, you know. And yet, and yet, 
accidentally through Roland Keyboard Guy, I bumped into, you know, got involved with Mike Pinder from the Moody Blues again recently, and now we're talking about doing some stuff. I wasn't about to call Paul up every day and say, how are you doing, man? See you later. <laughs> I mean, you go off and do your thing. And we bumped into each other in Wembley, and we had a great night. We stood at the back and, you know, in the sound, by the sound people and watched UB40. We always loved reggae music. Brought a few memories back about Linda because she's totally into reggae too. And it was a great night. See you later, pal. <laughs> that was it. Oh, and I'm doing a book. And Paul's helping me do it. So that's going to be good. You know, he'll remind me a few stories and vice versa. So, you know, like there's a lot of things that I forget. And some, Actually, if you write about what you remember, it's always a good thing. Because, but I don't get it quite right. But, you know, at least I'm enthusiastic about what I'm writing about. But, yeah, we'll have a laugh about that. But it's going to take a while. 